So the normal alphabet has 26 letters in, and I guess if we consider both lowercase and I suppose also the uppercase equivalent, what we have then are 52 things. The problem is that for physics we need more than 52 quantities and units to explain everything around us. And we can overcome this in sort of three ways. The first thing we can do is we can use one letter to represent different things. So little c, for example, can be specific heat capacity, but it can also be things like the speed of light or perhaps the speed of a wave in another material. So c, depending on the context, can mean different things. The other thing that we can do is we can join letters together. So for example, if we're looking at magnetic fields and we've got things like the Weber, or perhaps we're looking at radioactivity and things like the Becquerel, we can join a couple of letters together to represent different units. But the third thing we can do, uh, we've taken from uh, this guy over here. So here's, I've got my Spartan soldier, and it was the Greek alphabet that we actually use. So this is a really old alphabet, uh, you know, sort of from eight or 900 BC. And there are certain letters that we can use to actually represent further quantities and units in A-level physics. So I'm gonna start at the beginning, and the first letter that we use is alpha. This is a bit like a, a sort of a fish sign. Uh, and alpha is used for things like proportional, as well as alpha particles, which are, you know, sort of going off in radioactivity. After this, we have the next kind of uh, letter, which is beta. And if you look at alpha beta, that's where the word alphabet comes from. So beta often used for, um, again, radioactive particles, which are given off. Another kind of, kind of particle that's given off are gamma rays. Uh, and although this symbol here is uh, the ga letter gamma, that actually represents all photons. So we can represent a photon of light, or even a radio uh, sort of wave, uh, sort of the photon that makes up a radio wave, uh, as one of these uh, gamma symbols here. After this, we've got the letter delta. Okay, and delta often means a change in. If you have a very small change, you can use this symbol of delta, which is basically a circle that then goes up and to the right, a bit like some sort of kind of musical note. But we can also use the, the capital form of this. So this is a capital delta, and that's a triangle. Some of you might have seen stuff like this at uh, GCSE, perhaps when you're looking at acceleration is delta V over T, perhaps, we're looking at the change in. And if you have a really, really small change, we then use the symbol D, which is where we get onto things like differentiation and dy by dx. So that's the letter delta. After this, we've got uh, the letter epsilon, and epsilon um, can be used for things like EMF, for example, and it's basically a really curly E with maybe a little loop in there. So this is the letter epsilon. After that, there's a letter which we don't really use that much, but this is the letter eta. So eta is like a, the letter N with a really long tail on one end. And this is often used to represent efficiency. After this, we've got one that everybody's familiar with, theta. Now theta uh, can be used to represent angles, and that's where you might have seen it, so sine theta, cos theta. But also, because this is like a bit like a letter T, so theta and T, we can also use theta to represent temperature. And in physics, the convention is if we're looking at maybe temperature on the Celsius scale, we use theta, but temperature on the absolute scale, on the Kelvin scale, we use the letter T. After that, there's another symbol, which again, you might have seen beforehand, which is lambda. So lambda, often uh, lambda length, is used for things like wavelength, amongst many other things. After this, we've got uh, something which we use to represent 10 to the minus six, and this is a letter mu. Uh, and followed by this, we've got the letter, which is like a curly V, which is nu. So this one here, when you come on to looking at uh, neutrinos, which are these kind of massless particles given out when uh, things like alpha, when, when beta radiation is given off, uh, these neutrinos, uh, it's basically like a little uh, sort of curly V. After this, we've got the letter pi. Again, you should be familiar with this. Uh, often we're talking about things like, you know, pi radians, for example, so pi comes up all the time. And there's another letter, which is rho. Now rho, is a curly slanted P. And this can be used to thing, uh, for things like density, which is given a symbol rho, but it's also used for things like resistivity, um, which is something that you're gonna come on to in year 12. Next up, we have this thing here, which is basically like a circle with a line that comes off to the right. And this is the letter sigma. And this is the lowercase version, but we also sometimes use uppercase sigma uh, often, to, you know, it's used in mathematics quite a lot to mean the sum of. So this is like a capital M on its side, or a kind of a very kind of spiky letter E. So you've got lowercase and uppercase sigma. Uh, this one here is used for things like stress, if we're looking at material properties. The next letter is the letter phi. 
Uh, this is again used when we're looking at things like flux density and, and you're looking at magnetic fields in year 13. This is like a circle with a line that comes down through the middle. And then the last letter that we tend to use is this one here, which is omega. So it's like a, basically like a really curly W. Uh, and this lowercase curly W is the letter omega used for things like angular frequency. But we also use the capital omega, which is this symbol here. And that's what we measure, or that's the symbol that we use for the unit of ohms. So omega and ohms. Now there are more Greek letters in the alphabet, but these are very much the kind of sort of the letters that we need for A-level physics. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, eta, theta, lambda, mu, nu, pi, rho, sigma, phi, and omega. If you have a good understanding of these letters here, how to say them, and also how to write them down, then that really expands the amount of things that you can describe using letters so that you don't have to write as much. So when you're looking at new units, new equations, and new quantities, these are the things that you need to know about as you go through A-level physics. Thank you.